everyone, I'm Caleb. And I'm Tristan. And welcome back to the Friday Parch channel. Are you ready to maximize your vehicle's performance and lifespan? Today we're tackling two essential maintenance items that often get overlooked, but make a huge difference. Oil filters and fuel filters. We'll explain what they do and why they're so important and how replacing them regularly can save you money and headaches down the road. Stick around because Friday Parts is here to guide you through it. Let's start with the basics. Think of the oil filter as the kidney for your engine. As your engine runs, oil circulates and lubricates all those critical parts. Over time, this oil gets contaminated with dirt, metal particles, and combustion byproducts. If you don't change your oil filter often enough, a clogged filter can lead to a catastrophic failure because of lower oil pressure getting to your vital components of your engine. Now the fuel filter is your engine's gatekeeper for clean fuel. So it removes dirt, rust, and other particles from your fuel before it reaches your fuel injectors or your carburetor, which are all sensitive to your engine's performance. A clean fuel filter ensures proper fuel delivery, maximizing your gas mileage and saving you money at the pump. Your engine will run smoother, accelerate better, and idle more consistently with clean filters. Okay, so how often should you replace your oil and fuel filters? As a general guideline, the best source of information is your vehicle's owner's manual. It will provide the manufacturer's recommended service intervals based on mileage or time. For oil changes, most manufacturers recommend changing your oil and oil filter every 5,000 to 7,500 miles. So check your owner's manual. Or in the case of a tractor, it's every 100 hours that's on your hour meter. So remember, if you're driving in severe conditions or stop and go traffic or in dusty conditions like a tractor, you'll want to change your filters more often. But always err on the side of caution because a filter is cheaper than an engine. So remember, safety first, protective gloves, eye protection, fire extinguisher handy, and make sure your engine's cool before you start working on it so you don't burn yourself. Also, make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. So for fuel systems, you wanna cut off the supply of fuel, which in this case is just cutting the fuel off from this point, or if you're in a vehicle, there's a fuel rail that's pressurized that you'll have to depressurize it with a Schrader valve and a line. So we're gonna cut the fuel off here since it's gravity fed, so it's gonna stop feeding the fuel to the filters. Now, right now we're taking some of the fuel out of the system. I just didn't want it to overflow on us here. So to get to the fuel filters, we've got to take the caps off of the housings. Today, we're using a high quality replacement filter from Friday Parts. They offer a wide selection of filters and other parts for all makes and models, ensuring you get the right fit and performance. So this tractor is a 1964 tractor that Friday Parts has the filter for. And there's two filters here, a primary and secondary. Thank you, Friday Parts. So this is your seal. We're lubricating it with oil to make sure it seals properly. So when you put your hat back on your filter, you won't have any leaks. You make sure you clean off the area before you put it on. So now we have to bleed the system. So we turn the fuel back on and we make sure we get all the air out of the fuel so you're not putting air into your fuel injectors, otherwise your engine's not gonna run. Yep, so you can hear the air in it. So now that the fuel came out of that, you know you have both of these full. And now you wanna check for leaks. So we're gonna clean this off here. And you're gonna check your fuel feed line here that goes up to your injector pump. Make sure to properly dispose of your used filters and your used fuel. Most auto parts stores will take them off your hands for free. So now that we're done replacing the fuel filters, we'll move on to the other side of the tractor for the oil filters. But first we have to drain the oil. So for this tractor, the oil filters are pretty simple. It's the same as the other side. Um, although we don't use a traditional filter wrench for this oil filter because it has a housing and there's a cartridge inside, so we use a regular wrench. But first we're gonna drain the oil from the oil pan, and that we use an eight bit socket for. For the drain pan, we're gonna use a bucket because we recycle our oil and we take it to the parts store. As you can see, I use cardboard on the floor so I don't get oil on my floor. You'll need to drain your engine oil first so now we're taking the housing off of the 
oil filter. So this is a cartridge filter. So there's a cartridge inside the housing and that's what we're changing. So take your old gasket out. So remember our first tip, always use clean oil on your O-ring before installing it so you get a good seal. And then make sure your mating surface was clean. And on your filters, on the cartridge filters, some of them have a certain way they have to go. Um, usually it's so the writing is correct looking at it so you can read it, not upside down. So now like pre-lubing a regular spin-on filter, we're gonna fill up our cartridge with oil and then put our filter in so we're not running it dry. And like a regular filter, you don't over tighten them. And now we're gonna do the secondary filter. I do it a quarter turn after it makes contact with your gasket up top. Now, now we're adding the oil because you don't want to run your engine without oil or a clogged filter because it won't get engine to your it won't get oil to your vital components. So for diesel, we're using 1540 oil. So this is your dipstick, and what it tells you here is full or add. You want to be close to the full line, and we're we're almost there. Add a hair more, and then. We will run it and check the oil again and make sure our fuel's not leaking anywhere. Now we're going to fire up the tractor. Now we're going to be changing the fuel filter and the oil filter on our truck here. A couple things to remember whenever you're changing your filters. Always make sure to put oil on your seal before you put on the filter and pre-fill your filter. Whenever you're tightening the filter down, make sure you only do three-fourths of a turn tight after it gets a little bit snug. Let's revisit some essential skills and tips for whenever you're servicing your engine. The first tip is to consult your owner's manual. The second tip is to make sure you depressurize your fuel system to prevent fuel from spilling out. Depressurizing your fuel system may involve relieving pressure at the fuel rail or disconnecting your fuel fuse and letting the engine run until it stalls. Replacing your engine oil and filter is pretty easy. First, we'll start off with removing our drain bolt and draining out all the used oil. After you take out your drain plug, make sure to check the bottom of it where the magnet is to make sure there's no metal filings on it. And then check your crush washer to make sure it's still good and not too flat. Now we've got our engine oil drained, we're good to reinstall our bolt. Now we'll get some fresh towels, clean up around the surface, and then we'll retighten the drain bolt. Your drain bolt's like your oil filter. You don't want to over tighten it, just three fourths of a turn after it's snug. And that's it. Before we go back down under the truck, we're gonna do a couple essential items. We're gonna pre-fill our oil filter with oil. Then we're also gonna put oil on the O-ring around the filter. This ensures a proper seal and makes getting the filter off next time a lot easier because it won't be stuck on you. Make sure to only tighten your oil filter three-fourths of a turn after it's snug. If you still have any questions, check your owner's manual because I'm sure they'll have specific instructions on how to tighten it. Now we're gonna pre-fill our oil filter and we're gonna wet the O-ring around the filter. This ensures that we don't have any air pockets in our oil system, and it'll ensure a proper seal whenever we retighten our filter. Now we're gonna remove our old oil filter. For that, we're gonna use an oil filter wrench. And there's the old filter. Now we're gonna install our new oil filter provided by Friday Parts. Now we're going to refill our engine up with oil. This truck takes five gallons of 15W40. If you're unsure about the weight and amount of oil that your engine takes, check your owner's manual. They'll have that information in there. That's it for your oil change. All I have to do is start the truck back up and check our oil level to make sure it's good. Now we're going to change the main fuel filter. Again, make sure to pre-fill your filter and get oil on your seals to ensure a nice good seal than one that won't get stuck. Now let's take off the old filter. Now we got our new filter here from Friday Parts. We've already pre-filled it with diesel fuel 
and put oil on our O-ring to ensure a nice tight seal. Now that we reinstalled our filter, we want to check it for leaks, make sure we don't have anything leaking out anywhere. Then we'll restart the truck and check our levels to make sure they're all good. This truck has a primer bulb on it, so we're going to pump fuel to the new fuel filter we just put on. Just go until it's tight. Now that we fired up the truck, we're going to check our engine oil level again to make sure it's good. We're right on the full line. After changing the engine oil in a vehicle, you want to reset your mileage so you can keep track of how many miles are on the oil change. And there you have it. You now have the knowledge to understand, maintain, and replace your filters like a pro. Remember, these small components have a huge impact on your engine's health and performance. Regular filter changes are an investment in your vehicle's longevity and gives you a peace of mind. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the Friday Parts channel for more guides. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions or like us to cover any topics in future videos. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching and we'll, we'll see you next time. time. Metal particles, medical particles. No, no. <laughs> medical. You got me on it. Medical. You better say it because I'm on medical. Meta. <laughs> Over. <laughs> okay. All right. We got. Okay. 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 One more try, and then you take it, Tim. With medical. You, you better, okay. Okay. All right. Metal. Metal. Okay. All right. Metal. Metal byproducts. No. <laughs> Go do it, Kelp. I can't do it. One more time. Oh, okay. Over time, this oil gets contaminated with dirt, metal particles, and combustion byproducts.